Sri Lanka is a development success story. Solid economic growth, impressive falls in poverty, the end of conflict and a democratic transition in 2015 are all remarkable achievements. What can Sri Lanka do to build on this progress? The World Bank Group has tried to answer this question by carrying out a systematic country diagnostic, a study that analyzes drivers and constraints to ending poverty and boosting shared prosperity. There are good reasons to be optimistic. Sri Lanka's people, natural endowments and nearness to big markets offer many opportunities. Yet there are challenges on the road to greater prosperity. Sri Lanka's government is not collecting enough revenues to pay for the public goods and services needed to sustain development. Because of this, much less is spent as a share of the economy on education, health and social protection than in other countries. Sri Lanka will need to change policies to create more and better jobs. The country has not been able to build its export sector and much growth came from investment by government. Sri Lanka is now among the most protectionist countries in the world. Foreign Direct Investment or FDI has been at or under 2% of the economy, far lower than levels in other middle-income countries. The economy has not expanded enough into new areas over the past few decades and more could be done to make it part of the global economy. Understanding where the poor live is important for ending poverty. Most poor people live within 30 kilometers of major cities. This means it is critical to ensure that the poor gain from growing cities. At the same time, there are higher rates of poverty in the north, east, estates and Monaragala. It will take a wide-ranging approach to bring people out of poverty in these areas. Ensuring that more women get good jobs is also important. Women represent just over half of the working age population, but only a third of the employed population. A share that has remained unchanged for decades and lower than in most middle income countries. Sri Lanka will need to address longer term challenges institutional reforms to provide for open, accountable and inclusive government are critical. It will also need to balance its aim of economic growth with preserving its remarkable environment. Finally, as a country with an aging population, it will face a major challenge to get rich before it gets old. Addressing these challenges is difficult but certainly possible. All Sri Lankans have an interest in putting the country on a path towards inclusive growth that will end poverty and boost shared prosperity. 